Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Revealing Your Relationship Lounge. I'm Coach Deb. This is part two of We Can Recover All. But guess what? It takes a village. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. You know, you can't heal unless you reveal. I want you to call up your friends, call up your family, call up anyone that you know need to hear, you know, the message that is going to be conveyed today. My sister and my brother, Teresa Hammond and James Bryant, they're going to, it's going to be a continuation from the first uh, session. That we, okay. He wants to remind me that it's Alex. For those of you that know <coughs> my Alex, it's very important that you understand once they got free from the addiction, there was a road that they traveled. There was a journey that they, they took and, and that journey requires support. Because you don't just survive, you have to thrive. As we move forward, let me tell you how important it is that you call up somebody that's been struggling. You know somebody, everybody knows somebody that's done dealt with an addiction. This morning is the perfect day for you to contact them and, and let them know there's a message on Facebook Live on Monday morning motivation for you to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, Put your hands together for my siblings and welcome them to Facebook Live Revealing Heal. Hello, good morning, my brother and my sister. Hello. Good morning, good morning my beautiful sister. Hey. I love you both. Well, you listen, I love y'all too. You know, the people that have joined in and they are part of, of um, you know, the the uh, Motivation Monday podcast this morning. For everyone that has tuned in, I need to let you know how the enemy has fought, you know, us this morning. He did not want this to, to, to come forth because the message that is going to be conveyed this morning, it's going to be so helpful because you really do need to understand that once you're free from addiction, whether it be drugs or, you know, abuse in a relationship or whatever, you need support. You, there's no me in, you know, staying free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first have my brother, while my sister's trying to adjust, you know, I'm going to have my brother to speak to you this morning and share with you, you know, how it was for him in, you know, when he first got away from that, that addiction, how, you know, he experienced real life weaknesses. And how each day he still has have to, you know, make sure that he on the right track, you know, keeping a prayer life and things like that. Bro, go ahead and share, you know, with everyone that's listening, the reality of once you get free from an addiction, how it was for you. Let's just talk about how it was for you and how it is for you. Good morning once again, my sister. I want to thank you for, uh, for letting me get on here telling my story, I wasn't prepared the first time, you know. And first of all, I want to give all thanks to God. And what and what and what took me through through this uh, 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 out this addiction was my family. My family means a whole lot to me, you know. I felt like I had a lot to fight for, you know. My grandbabies, my mother my siblings, you know, I even have great grandbabies, you know, that I, I, I want, I want to be able to, to, to watch them at least, you know, start school. But what, what, uh, what, what helped me out was, you know, uh, it started out with my grandbabies, you know, when I was coming up and I was out there in the street, I became a grandfather and I, I always, I always wondered, you know, what it would be like once they grew up. Okay, I've got eleven grandbabies. I've got eleven. I've got three great grandbabies. Oh, Lord, you just don't know how much I love them, you know. And I, 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 you don't, know, you know, during the time that I was uh, uh, in the street, my grandbabies, you know, you don't know how, how I felt when they would come to me and say, Popo, can you let me have a dollar? 
you know? And I couldn't even give my grandbabies a dollar, you know, for uh, uh, trying to support my own habits, you know? And I had determined once I got myself together, you know, they wouldn't have to want for nothing. Okay, so I've got three grandbabies that have already graduated. I've got two that's in college, you know? And it ain't a time that they cannot come to me and ask me for something that they want and I can give it to them. You know, that makes me feel like a proud grandfather, you know? And I, I started out driving trucks at the age of 21. I've been driving trucks 30, little over 33 years, you know? I was driving trucks when I was out there on drugs. And I thank God, you know, that I didn't get out there and hurt nobody, you know? But what it boils down to is my grandbabies and my great grandbabies, you know? I, I mean, I fight every day to support them, whatever they need. If I can't get it, I, I, I pour out blood, sweat, and tears to take care of them, make them not want for nothing, you know? And, and nine times out of 10, you know, they don't got grown. They don't ever call me unless they want something now, you know, but that's fine. I just want to, I, I just want everybody to know my grandbabies is the one to help pull me through this because I, I, I had something to fight for, you know, and I'm going to continue on fighting. It's nothing, nothing in this world that's going to pull me back out there in the, these streets because there's nothing out there for you, you know? And, and I, 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 I just, I, I, I want to be able to help somebody that's listening to this, uh, uh, this broadcast, you know? Um, it, it ain't a such thing as I want to do it. You can. You can do it. Nobody but God. God took me through. And he, he's not through with me yet. That's right. You know, he's not through with me yet. You know, I've got, okay, I'm not, not that I'm bragging or nothing like that. With, with my blood, sweat, and tears. Okay, I've got a home that's paid for. I've got cars that's paid for. I've got toys that pay for, but let me remind you the same thing that God have blessed me with, he can take it away from me at a matter of seconds. So, you know, don't, don't think, you know, uh, uh, because you come up, you can't come down, you know? Yes. Don't think you can't, you can't come down because you know what? God is a wicked God. He, he will help you. He will help you. But you got to show him that you needing his help. You know, so I I, I want to say to my God, thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I, I, I haven't stopped yet. I want to keep on going. Right. You know, yes, I want to keep on going. And if there's anybody out there that, you know, <laughs> need my help, my support, you know, uh, uh, as far as anything, need somebody to talk to, call me. Reach out to me. You know, because if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. You know, I am. I am a living testimony. Yes, you are. My sister, are. she's a living testimony. Because you know what? If it wasn't for God, me and her wouldn't be here telling this story this day. That's right. And I, I just, I just want, I just want to thank him for watching over her, watching over me, watching over my mother for worrying about me and my sister out in the street. You know, because if it wasn't for them and you, Coach Dale, with the prayers that you have put up, you know. For us, where would we be? I you just want to say thank you. I want to inter interject uh, because I I just love the fact that you are letting people know how important it is that you had a, you got a relationship with God, 
and how important you are letting people know that where you are is because of God. And if you don't serve God, what he give you, he will take away. Exactly. Yes. You're, making that, you're making that very clear. And before I bring my sister in, I'm glad that you acknowledge the fact that your grandbabies are a part of your village. My, my number one, my number one priority. Right, right. My right. grandbabies. My and my and, and my great grandbaby. Right. Do I look good enough? Do I look good enough? Well, you know you have some great grandbaby. How about huh? that? Okay. You I, I leave. Well, listen. That's what happens though when you clean your life up. God yes. restores you. He restores you. So I want you to just stay right there. I'm gonna bring Teresa in, and I want her to have the opportunity to share her village because you can't do nothing without God. And you need your village. You need your village. When you recover all, you want to keep what you what God gives you. So how important is the village? Who is your village? How important is your relationship with God and all that he has blessed you with? Well, my relationship with God, with God is very important. Um, my village was number one, God. My children, I didn't have grandchildren, but, um, you know, I had to get away from old friends. I had to get some new friends, some friends exactly. that lift me up and not tear me down. I had to um, stay away from the old places. I had to find new surroundings. You know, the places I used to go. I no longer go because I know it's still out there and it ain't going nowhere. I actually see people that um, used to get high with me, they still struggling. They still going through it. And my heart goes out to them. My heart really goes out to them because it, it just lets me know that it's still out there and it ain't going nowhere. No, it's and, not. And, and also, it could still be me, you know, I'm one um, paycheck away from being homeless again. I'm one um, hit away from going back out there. So, you know, I just, I just, I take it day by day. You know, I no longer think about it, but I know it's still out there. Um, I have my children and my grandchildren and my loved ones to um, keep me occupied. Thank the Lord. Um, but just know it's still out there and it ain't going nowhere. But you got to surround yourself with positive people, people that want to do, do stuff, you know, do good Amen. things. They say Amen. when you know better, you do better. But we still got old people out, older people, much older people out there that's still struggling with this thing. It's still out there. I could still be out there. I just thank God that he sent me down and um, said, that's enough. You know, that's enough. It's time for you to come on in. And I'm glad that I humbled myself enough and wanted, um, wanted to be free and clean to come in because a lot of times god have blessings for us and we can mess it up ourselves that's right sometimes we mess up our own blessing whether it be what comes out of our mouth or how we treat people um you know we can we can mess up our own blessing i just thank god that i'm i feel like i'm one of the chosen ones mm. and i i just thank god every day and with this pandemic, I show sure enough, thank God, every day. Every day I can wake up and open my eyes and ain't laying on no cooling board. Or I can open my eyes and ain't in burning hell. That's a blessing to me, but it lets me know I got another day to get it right. That's right. You know, and, um, you know, like um, Alex was saying, if God can deliver us, he can deliver anybody. You know, yeah, you still gonna have problems. Yeah, trouble still gonna come your way. Talk but about guess it. what? Being, being clean, you know how to handle the situation better than you would if you um, 
was all doped up and drugged up. You know, you have a conscious mind, um, you know, and it feels good. It really feels good. The sun is brighter. The colors are brighter. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I just try not to complain. I, when I find myself complaining, I stop. I, I just stop and, you know, ask the Lord, forgive me. And I try to start it over when I'm having a bad day. In the midst of me having a bad day, I have known to stop and pretend I just started my day all over again. That's good. But you know, it takes, okay, I understand, you know, people that I hear that gets high, you know, they can't think unless they're high, you know, they, you know, and, and, and okay, you, you can take, you can take an old man that's been drinking all his life. And I'm the type, I'm the type of a, a, a man I will sit down and listen to this man because this man, just because I'm not going to look at him, you know, uh, uh, like, oh, he's drunk. He don't know what he's talking about. Yes, he do. This man is talking some wisdom. What this man say, you best listen to this man because he's not going, he's not telling you nothing that he, he ever been through, you know, but you take people, you know, get out here you know they smoke this weed you know um say like you know they you know the young guys they they, they like to rap you know it's like they they got their thinking cap on oh man let me sit down and smoke this blunt you know i got some words for you you know and they can come out with some powerful stuff straight out their head freestyle that's what they call it you mm -hmm. know they can freestyle straight out their head you know and and, and you know and they, they they rapping about some stuff, you know, some, some real stuff, you know, they haven't even been on this earth long enough to go through. They rapping about some stuff that I went through when I was young, you know, and, and you come up and ask me a question about uh, uh, certain things, you know, uh, uh, that happened uh, uh, yesterday. <laughs> I can't remember nothing, but you asked me something that happened 20 years ago. I come out the top of my head and tell you, hey, it's the truth, you know. But, you know, like I said, a lot of people, you know, uh, like I say, especially young guys, they, you know, they can't really tell, you know, uh, uh, um, what's, what, what's going through their mind unless they're high, you know. And they be speaking the truth, Yeah. you know. But you don't have to be high to, uh, 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 to tell your story, No. you know. You know, you don't have to be how to tell your story. You know, I'm sitting here, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sober. I'm sober as God right now. I'm sober. You know, but uh, if, if 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 I was if I was blazing, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I would have everybody sitting around, man, just checking me out. This dude really feeling it. He know what he's talking about. You know, but I'm talking with a with, with a sober mind. You know, um, you don't have to be high. To uh, uh to uh, get your point across and let nobody know what you, you know what you're going through, you know. That's a good Just tip. Sit down and sit exactly. Sit down. Speak from your heart. You know. People will listen. Yes. You know they will listen. Yes. You know. Tell me something. Do you believe that? possibly doing the transition of, you know, coming off the drug, the addiction, whatever the addiction is in those weak places, do you feel like a lot of times you're drawn back to your old ways because the struggle can be so, you know, so painful, you know what I'm saying? We're okay, talking about the journey. I mean, as far as my attitude, yeah. Yeah, but as far as getting out there in the street, doing what I used to do, you know, dealing with this poison, no, baby, uh-uh, it don't, it, it don't, it don't even cross my mind because I refuse, I refuse to go back down that road. 
you know. I, I mean, I've, I've got something to live for now. That's it right know? there. That's yeah, it right there. I've got something to live for. You know, my beautiful grandbabies. You know what? I've got all of my siblings that grew up with me. They're still alive. Yes, thank you, Jesus. You know? Yes. You know? And, 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 and you know, and, 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 and God is not through with us yet. You know, he's not through with us yet. You know, now, this story that I'm telling, you know, I hope and I pray that it'll give somebody that's still out there in the street something to think about. But if you continue on doing what you're doing, you're still my brother. You still right. my sister. That's right. You know, because I've been down that road. You know. So, you gotta I mean, love I, them. I, you gotta love them out of a situation. Exactly. You know, it's like I believe that people go deeper into an addiction when they don't have the love and the support. You know what I'm saying? They're already battling with their own, you know, inner demons and different things. So it's like when a person's in trouble, the last thing we need to be doing is criticizing, you know, and putting exactly. our feet on people when they're already down. And we know what that's like. Oh man. Man, I I've I've been I've been talked about it, I've been abused and I've been stormed. You know what? I just praise God and thank God that I'm still here to tell my story. Amen. You know? Amen. Uh trees. And this and what, what you have gotten out of me, this is just half of the story. I mean, I can sit down and write a book, you know, about the things Don't that I have been through. Don't well, try I to know, write it tonight. I know it's more to the story. Uh, I know it's more uh, to the story. Just... Tom, Tom won't, won't uh, let us have it. But I do want Trees to talk about, because, you know, even though addictions, they we deal with, with uh, you know, the journey different. And I want her to share what her feelings are and what she's dealt with through the years, because you've been clean over 30 plus years. What was that journey like, you know, when you face weaknesses? I believe that when we have, when there's an addiction, it's something you gotta, you, you deal with every day. So for you, what was it like for you to have to stand up against a, the weakness, you know, of going back, you know, help somebody that's going through that journey right now. And they've been clean for a long, long time, but it's like just that, just do it one time. I'm just gonna do it one time. And then after I go ahead and get that itch out the way, then I'm gonna be all right. But it'll be another time. So how did you, how, how did you get past that? Um, a guy told me one time, he said, um, you know, when you start to crave, when you start to joan, when you start to fiend, he said, I tell you what, he said, do me a favor, speed it up and think about the hell it's done took you through. Speed it up and think about the misery it's done cost you. Speed it up and think about how you hurt your loved ones. Imagine your son running behind that car. You know, imagine your children been in foster care and they they being abused so in my mind it's like my children was in hostage and and I just prayed I prayed I prayed to God you know and and down through the years it's been like a roller coaster I no longer think about um the drug but i i tend to have those um, addictive behaviors, you know, um, I'm, I, I'm easily to get addicted, you know, whether it be for someone or something. And I, I just try to, I just try to keep everything positive. You know, if I'm gonna get addicted to something, I want, I want to get addicted to God. Yeah. I want to be addicted to reading my Bible. I want to be addicted to treating people right. Yeah. 
I want to be addicted to treating people with love. You know, that addiction personality is always going to be there, but you choose your battles. You know, and I just try to choose it a positive way. Mm. Um, I mean, I don't know if that makes any sense to you. It does. It does. But, um, you know, I just, I just, when I find myself being negative, I, I can stop in the middle of it and make something positive out of it. You know, I'm just trying to see Jesus. Right. You know, a lot of people are not religious. A lot of people are not churchgoers. If you think that chair sitting in your living room gonna keep you clean and sober, you let that chair be your higher power. I know my higher power is God, mm -hmm. but they said whatever you think is going to keep you clean, um, you let that be your higher power. And, and, you know, when my addictive behaviors pop up, I just try to make something positive out of it. And that has got me for 30 some years. So what's different? I, I'm not perfect. I'm nowhere near perfect. I still make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I still fall short. You know, I still fall down. Yes. But thank God I I know how to get back up and dust myself off and not get on that pity party and say, oh, I'm just going to go back. I, I don't even think about going back. Going back is not an option for me. See, where other people, they say, well, you know what? You stay clean and sober. One thing about it, if you don't like the feeling, you can always go back. I can't go back. I, I don't have a choice. I know that if I go back, I'm not going to make it back. Thank you. So, so that's Thank not you. the option for me. And I, I just try to keep going. You still have problems. You still got bills to pay. Your kids still get on your nerves. You still, your grown kids still act like babies sometimes. You have to give them. You have to do for them. But that's okay today. You know, it was a time that I couldn't do for him. You know, so any time that I can do for him and rather be an encouraging word, help him out if I got it, you know, that it makes, it, it does something to my heart inside. It just thrilled me. You know, I, I just get goosebumps when I know that I can, not just for my children, people in general, it just warms my heart. See, when you, you feel, know, you know you're alive. When you feel, yeah. you know you're still here. Whether it's anger, happiness, sadness, whatever the case may be, if you're feeling you are alive, that's enough to be grateful. When you look exactly. at it that way, you won't be so quick to be like, you getting on my nerves or I can't stand you because you always messing with me. But you're feeling all these emotions and you're feeling all of this. That you you it's like well Lord I'm alive. Yeah. I got a second chance. I got a do do over. I got a new beginning. I hear what you're saying. But you know, but you know, she said something a while ago that made sense. You know, if I went back, you know, I I don't make too many promises to the Lord. If I go back, I won't make it. You know, I have promised. My God, I have promised him too much to go back. Thank you, God. You know, so uh, I can say I can say I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. What about you, Teresa? You good? I'm good. Show you right. To God be the glory. Yes. I don't you listen. I don't get no glory. God gets all the glory. There you go. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, our time won't be long this morning because I know that uh, I, I really pushed it. And I thank y'all so much for coming through for me. I, I do want you to share with the people separately. Share with them, you know, how important it is to separate yourself from the people that 
contributed to your addiction and how important it is to create a whole new circle of people that support and that will tell you the truth, even if it hurts. See, that's where we fall short too. Sometimes we just want to be around people that's going to tickle our ears. You know what I'm saying? But even family sometimes make you angry and you don't want to be around them. But the village include people that love you and that care about you and going to tell you the truth, going to lead you to the, the, the right way, going to help you when you down, you know, because everybody go through weak moments. Everybody go through weak moments. We need each other. We need each other. So I need for y'all to to just, you know, touch on, on, on that because you're doing something different now and the blessings of the Lord is up on you because your, your walk is different. Your talk is different. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, just talk about that, Alex, you know. Well, you know, well, you know, you know what, was, what, what, what was the hurtness part about my situation was when I was out there in the street, I had friends, you know, and now that I have uh, become a better person, I have less friends. It makes me feel like they never was my friend from the get go. You know, it was only because of what I've done or what I had, you know, but they don't realize I've got even more now. <clears throat> you know, and, 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 and I, you know, and I just I I, I just want them to to uh, uh, put put themselves uh, in, in my situation. You know, uh, uh, like I said a while ago, if I can, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Just continue on having faith. Faith comes in the size of a mustard seed. It's not much. You can do it. You can do it. Well, and I can say once again, I'm good. Thank you, Lord. I'm good. I, you know, I, I just want to kind of piggyback on that and say it's very important to have um, positive people in your life. You don't want to be around nobody negative. It's like when I start hearing people talk ne negative, it kind of poisons my spirit. And I found myself doing that more and more. I don't want to be around no negativity. I don't want to be around no gossiping. I just don't want to be bothered with that. Anything that's going to poison my spirit, I just don't want to be around it. You know, and it's to each his own. Um, but it's very important to have a support group as far as your... Now, you don't, if you don't burn bridges with your families, start working on that. You can't expect that bridge to be built overnight. Build because exactly. if you done stole from them, took from them, hurt them, and talked to them any kind of way, it's going to take some time. But don't try to prove it to them. You prove it to yourself, and everything else will fall in place. I promise you, everything else will fall in place. How do you talk to your children? you know, um, about my addiction, being honest with yourself, you know, how long did that take? How long did it take? It's not just say your children, but people that you love, you know, and you want to know you, how, how, how what was that like being transparent? Because this is not first time, you know, y'all are sharing with people you don't even know, but first of all, you know, sharing with the family, not wanting them to look at you or view you in a negative light or weak. How did you, you know, how, how were you able to do that? In increments. It was a process. A little at a time. And you know what? For a while, we didn't have to because they didn't want to hear no more of our lies. They didn't want to hear no more of, I'm going to do better. They didn't want to hear no more of, I'm going to get it right. We had to show them. And we, we really didn't have to say nothing. Action speaks louder than words. Sometimes you, you, you know, you don't talk too much. You don't done too much. Just do it. Do the work. And it'll speak for itself. And the truth don't need to be explained. There it is right there. 
the truth sister. does not need to be explained. Now, before you leave, I would like to um, put this out there to all the listeners that's, uh, that's done tuned in. I'm asking each and every one of them to pray for my eldest son. You know, he diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. And I mean, this this boy, you know, he's he's got a heart of gold, you know, and he don't deserve to have to suffer the way that he's suffering, you know. And and and, and all you prayer warriors, just untuned in, pray for my son. I don't want him to have to give up. He's too young yeah. to give up, you know. I want to see him live longer than I live, you know. I don't want to have to bury him. I want him to bury me. So keep him lifted up in prayer because um, the little fella, you know, he's, you know, like I say, he's got a heart of gold and he's really, he's really, he's really battling, battling it right now. And he's scared. I'm scared. So kind of keep him lifted up, you know, because uh, nobody but God. Nobody and the, and, the, and, the, and the prayers, you know, prayers goes a long way. So prayer can reach what we can. Exactly. So keep them lifted up. You know, uh, let him know there is a God. Amen. And it's not it's not over. So well, just keep him lifted you. up in prayer. We've heard you, and he know by your own life that God is real. He will. Yes. The transformation so he know god is real real and we're going to stand in agreement for god to give him a complete healing any last words trees you want to you want to say before we close out this morning no i want to thank you for having me um you know thank you you thought it not robbery for me and asked me to come on i i truly appreciate that I'm not a person to do a whole lot of talking. Um, you mm. know, when when, hey. I first, <laughs> when I first got clean, I was speaking all over everywhere and I hadn't done it in years. So it was kind of, you know, um, a little different for me this go round. Uh, after I reached five years, I was speaking somewhere in, um, meetings for a long time and I just kind of stopped because I stopped going but um you know I, I appreciate you having me well it's been a pleasure and I'm thankful to the both of you for using this platform Reveal and Heal to share your stories and for being so transparent because people are looking for authentication they're looking for realness they're looking for truth and transparency. So thank you so much for sharing your story, which you could have just been so ashamed of, but you understand that your life is not your own. You understand that you're here for a purpose and for such a time as this. I wanna thank everyone for tuning in um, this morning. And please remember uh, my brother's uh, son uh, in prayer. We know that God is a healer. I wanna leave you with the Monday motivation quote, quote this morning. Just one small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day. And that's by Delia Lama. Remember, you can't heal unless you reveal. Please follow us on all social media. Remember guys that the Facebook Live is just for entertainment purposes. So many of us love reality TV, but the extra radio version is on all social media, pod, uh, on all podcasts. Uh, so that you can you can actually go to Apple, Pandora, Spotify. We're on all of them. So that's where you can hear the clear radio version rather than the live. That's just for y'all. I'm Coach Deb. It's been a pleasure and an honor this morning. Go out and do something great. You know what I'm saying? Love yourself first. Love everybody. And be an example. Have a great day. Thank you. I love y'all. I love you, sis.